Ready? <laughs> hey, everybody. Just wanted to say hello. We are in Indian Town. We are back in Sea Wind. It is raining outside, and it's been raining for the last three days. So we've been organizing and cleaning. So the video that you're about to watch is different than our usual videos. It's much longer, and we hope you enjoy this different kind of a formatting. Kind of like a feature length documentary style video. Um, it's what, about an hour long? 55 so minutes. It's 55 minutes, and it captures our four days sailing offshore in the Pacific. So that's a big deal for a couple of reasons, because we had never sailed on the Pacific, and because we had never done that amount of time offshore before. Yeah, multiple days. Multiple days. So I hope you, we hope you enjoy this special release. Um, and one thing we wanted to flag before you jumped in is just that this took a lot of time and love and energy to create this special release for you all um so we're gonna link our paypal link somewhere in the corner of this video um and maybe just consider a one-time donation for watching this hour-long video um just like you might would if you were renting a documentary or a movie so um maybe five bucks maybe two bucks whatever you think it's worth um, we'll link it above and we just hope you enjoy this video. Yeah. So with that, we are going to get back to sweating <laughs> our butts off um, and putting Sea Wind back together. All right. See you later. Well, we're about to call Chris Barker. As you can see, everyone prepares differently. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you have to say howdy or something. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Chris Parker, I need to save his phone. Hello, this is Chris. Hey, Chris. This is uh, Parker from Southern Cross. I think we're still looking at the best departure being whatever is the appropriate time to get you into San Francisco on Monday and realize that that's probably not workable for you. It looks like there's a reasonable chance that conditions by Sunday night around Cape Mendocino could be well above 20 knots out of the north-northwest and in the Monday afternoon sea breeze could be in the 30 gusting 40 range. The discrepancy between the ECM WF and the GFS, what are your uh, thoughts on that? This Now that we're getting closer in, they're both very different. So they are probably handling the um, thermal low over California, over Northern California differently. As to which model is correct, uh, the correct solution is probably a compromise between the two. Uh, the European model is often very idealistic in the long-range outlook, and that doesn't usually come to pass. Okay. And the GFS model um, may be over-accentuating the Cape effects a little bit. I think the best bet might be to go out and around the, um, to give Mendocino a wider berth and go ahead and complete the travel to San Francisco. The other complicating factor is that a lot of the inlets along the west coast of the U.S. Mm -hmm. are really, really shallow. Swells don't look to be that big. You know, Sunday, Monday, the four to five foot range mm -hmm. out of the west and northwest, the inlets can be somewhat challenging. Mm -hmm. You go from deep water to shallow water, all of a sudden the seas pile up mm -hmm. and uh, the inlets are typically not very deep. Given uh, how good this weather window is for the most part, and you know, things change mm -hmm. and European model looks more correct, then you can cut closer to Mendocino. Mm -hmm. But at, at this point, I would plan to pass off the coast somewhat west of 126 west, so 100 miles or so offshore. Mm -hmm. And um, then once you get past. 
past Mendocino reach back to the southeast towards San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, that keeps us out of the accelerating influence of the capes there and steady winds. Okay, cool. Thanks um, so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Take care. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, that, um, it all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Slightly more terrifying, but that's okay. Yeah, I don't see why any, um, any part of this boat wouldn't be seaworthy. I mean, we've really gone, you know, we've really gone through it, and it all seems like in really good shape. The worst thing could be some really weird, like, fire situation, or something with a through hole, you know what I mean? But I don't really foresee any of anything like that happening. All right, it is go time, team. Yeah. Let's get a, a hoorah. Hoorah. Wait, who, uh, who, 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 all right. Some of us are hoorahs and some of us are hoopy-doopers. Yeah, <laughs> I should have asked before. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, yeah. yeah. that's something here does not belong. <laughs> this doesn't belong. This feels so weird to me right now. Oh, young man. Yeah. That's All right. I'm really excited. Let's Ready? Yeah. Team up. What? Team wait. Boom. All right. <laughs> Autopilot. Navigation instruments. AS. VHF. Iridium. All right. All right, we are off the dock. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> Fear. For some, it brings an adrenaline rush, and for others, the urge to retreat into what's comfortable. The unknown is what fuels this emotion, and for me, it's a combined reaction. Since discovering sailing, I've started to push myself outside of my comfort zone more often. Leaving Nia Bay, heading towards the thick wall of fog, towards the unknown, was scary. The mighty Pacific Ocean was out there, and we were at the edge. Safety equipment and creature comforts can attempt to drag some comfort into the moment, but in some ways, no amount of precaution can mute these emotions. This lifestyle is full of the unknown, and I believe my mental health has benefited from it. I think I can speak for both Katie and I by saying that in some ways, it has saved us from ourselves. We are exercising our bodies and brains training them to deal with discomfort, and by doing so, we are pushing back the walls, expanding our comfort zone, and proving to ourselves that conquering the unknown is not only at our fingertips, but well within our grasp. Because after all, fear is the mind killer. Little update, Andrew is technically on watch right now, but I'm too excited to not be out here. <laughs> we are motor sailing. We just rounded uh, Cape Flattery, also known as the Cape of Disappointment up here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we left under very benign and calm conditions today, as you can see behind me. We are not disappointed. We are not, we are not disappointed, yes. <laughs> So um, we are attempting to download our first grip files over the satellite 
Iridium Go device. Probably not a good time to try for the first time <laughs> downloading on Iridium. <laughs> yeah. But hey, what are you gonna do? Um, so we have the AIS alarm set. So if a boat uh, is coming towards us and it's gonna pass a certain distance from us, then we'll have an alarm ring. We have the radar going. Uh, we have the sails up. Uh, we're motor sailing right now, and we are going to try and find some wind off the coast here. It could take most of the night, um, but hopefully sometime in the wee hours of the morning we will find some wind and then be able to shut the, uh, shut the engine off and head south. We have a point, a waypoint off of Cape Mendocino, which is about 440 miles away. And that point is 100 miles offshore from that cape to uh, be insulated from the localized weather that can happen around those land features. That should be in about three days we will be across from Mendocino. That would put us at Sunday, so. All right, that's the status update. I just came out on my watch. It's midnight. I have the 12 to 3 shift. The boat is sailing beautifully. We turned the engine off about a half an hour, hour ago. We are beam reaching in about 12 to 15 knots. Our boat speed is anywhere from about six and a quarter to seven. We don't have any targets on the AIS that are of concern. Uh, we're gonna be passing the Columbia River uh, probably by daybreak. Um, there is some traffic, some freighter traffic coming in and out of there, but that's a, wise, that, that's a ways away and uh, we can see everyone on AIS anyway. One of the really wild things is it's foggy right now. And so, ever so often, you can hear big ships blow their horns in the fog, you know, to alert anything else and anyone else of their presence. So that's a very new experience. Definitely have a healthy amount of nerves, but it's also just the most exhilarating experience at the same time. The winds are stable and I'm hoping that they stay stable. I don't see why there's any reason they wouldn't. Katie just went to bed. Andrew is in his second three hours of sleep now. Everyone gets six hours off. And the boat is just screaming along on a beam reach. And that's, that's it. I'm gonna sit here and scan the horizon and look at the EIS and the radar and watch the wind speed and enjoy myself. Your first watch. It was rough. I think the worst three three hours of my life, but also the most rewarding. I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> and then eat something. Since yes. I'm not sick anymore. Yeah, you threw up everywhere. Everywhere. All <laughs> over the North Pacific. <laughs> but well, it was did awesome. It. I'm proud of you. It was awesome. All right. Yeah. Oh. What have the conditions been like since? Oh, uh, you know, pretty consistent. Five knots on average of boat speed and ten knots of wind mm -hmm. when shifting the beam. 
plus or minus 20 or 30 degrees. Cool. But it's not bad. Not bad. It's definitely time for a preventer though. Yes. We're starting to swing. All right. Yeah. Katie and I just woke up. Katie is coming on watch next. I have three more hours of sleep, but I'm gonna help everyone put a preventer on. Space space station walking. <laughs> are you watching the video? That was good. No, I'm just in case anybody. It's your watch. How do you feel, sweetie? Pretty good. Pretty good? My mouth is dry. My mouth is really dry. We have seasickness patches on behind our ears. Never taken it before. I feel like it's probably definitely helping. There's a side effect that's dry mouth, and it is very unreal right now how dry our mouths are. <laughs> Morning number one. Good job, Bibi. Oh my god, my mouth is so dry. Oh, oh you just... Shit. Wow. They're playing on that way. Well, it's um, almost 10 o'clock in the morning. We hit the, hunt we hit the 100 mile mark earlier this morning. My shift right now is from nine to noon. The conditions are light and variable. We have, we have anywhere from like six to 10 knots of breeze and we are beamed to broad reaching, which means the apparent wind speed often falls below um, six even. So it's at 4.7 right now. Our speed over ground dropped below four, and so we put the engine on. And now we're motor sailing, and the engine's just at idle, and we're keeping pretty much above five knots. I think the wind is supposed to fill in more today as the day goes on. Um, 
We are approximately we are approximately 60 miles from shore now. I'm eating my baked apple porridge. And I have some instant coffee that Katie made for me. She just got off watch and is going to bed. I slept, I think, pretty well, considering it was our first night. I don't know if Andrew feels too hot. He, uh, he did puke quite a bit last night. Uh, he's sleeping now, though, so in two and a half hours, he has to come on watch. So, all righty, cheers. A successful whisker pole deployment, the first attempt since Andrew's ownership of Southern Cross. The pole's purpose is to effectively increase the width of the boat, taking the sheet way out over the water, pulling the sail out, and holding its shape so it doesn't collapse. This gives the boat a more constant amount of power, especially in light winds like this. The wind shifted shortly after, so we put the pole away and resumed our broad reaching. That was the theme of the first part of this passage. Light and variable conditions, and more consistent winds at night. This is what it looks like when downloading a weather forecast over a satellite connection. It behaves a lot like dial-up internet. We consistently had reliable downloads throughout our trip, and it added a huge layer of comfort to being offshore. Last night was absolutely beautiful. We saw a lot of bioluminescence. This morning we were greeted by dolphins, really fast and high jumping dolphins. Um, yeah, very vast. It's so calm, it's pretty wild. of its own, just making some cream of yeah. wheat. <laughs> oh shit, everything's harder. Yeah.
change of shift. My turn. How was it? Fine. Disgusting between, or it's about blowing 14 to 16 um, continuously, and I saw a couple gusts in like 18 and a half. Okay. So I just keep an eye out for how it builds. And also, I gradually, because the wind filled in, I was able to take us down a little further. Oh, okay. And so I think total I've taken us down like almost 15 degrees or so, we're almost on that. Oh. So you may have to um, take us down even further. Um, as the wind filled in. So. Cool. Other than that, there's no targets on the AIS, um, and everything's full and steady. Well, the sea state looks like it hasn't built at all. It's just hasn't what built up at it's all. It. Okay. No, it's beautiful. Doing so good. Don't change. <laughs> Stay true to yourself. <laughs> um, that's it. Okay. Shout out to her right now. Shout out to Dr. Michelle Thompson. reaching. We did 153 miles, nautical miles, in our first 24 hours. That's pretty good. And we had some really light winds at the beginning. And we did motor sail for part of it, but we didn't push the motor. It was just basically at an idle, just to keep us above five knots. The sails had done most of the work. And Now they're propelling us at six to seven knots. I just saw dolphins. I was trying to capture them on film, but they didn't come too close to the boat.
boat. Or a fishing boat. You can tell by the big outriggers they actually have them out right now. Really hard to keep the video stable. Alright, it is night number two. <clears throat> I relieved Katie. Um, everyone is acclimating, I think, really nicely to the boat's motion, finally. Uh, which is nice. I, don't, I think the seasickness is uh, subsiding. I feel like it's It's a fairly light wind right now. We're broad reaching with 11 to 13, maybe 14 knots true. So we're only feeling around like eight of it because of our boat's motion forward. It subtracts from the true wind speed. So I think you can probably hear the, the sails flogging right now. We get a little bit of a wind shift at times or when the wind dies, then the, the waves press up and roll us onto their side a little bit more and so the sails collapse. And then when we stand back up, they reinflate and make a big noise. So, we are heading towards Eureka. We all decided that um, San Francisco was kind of unrealistic, especially for the light conditions that we're having here. Our average is about 5.6 knots, which is pretty good considering the, the winds that we have. But like right now, we're only doing 3.9 knots speed over ground. And then sometimes it picks up and we, we've been averaging about 5.6, maybe 5.5. So, I'm just going to continue my watch. I wish I could show you guys more of what it looks like here. I can feel a little bit of fog in the air. So, it's becoming a little more damp. The whole day yesterday was uh, really nice. It was dry, no fog. And we are, are about 85 miles offshore now, believe it or not. Probably have to jibe the sails over to the other side because just because of the wind direction, we're getting actually kind of like, we're, we're getting forced offshore to keep our sails filled. So. And we could sail dead downwind, but I don't want to mess around with the pole in the middle of the night or anything. So, All right, that's it. Just getting off of watch. Andrew's gonna come up and uh, take over. Uh, I had to put the engine on because the winds really died off there for a while and we were just basically just getting rolled around and the sails were beating themselves to death. There we go. Gonna get some sleep. I'm hungry too.
Da -da -da. Yay, thank you. Like, <laughs> I know it's heavy. This is the amount of food I've eaten in possibly 48 hours all in one plate. <laughs> yeah. Talking about like, if you want to lose weight, just go offshore for a few days. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the winds have filled in a little bit. We have like a 12 to 15 knots. We have the main prevented on the starboard side and we're gonna put the jib on the pole. Here's a little bit of a midday report from Southern Cross. We are motor sailing. Um, we see birds. You can see them in the sky right there. We're about 65 miles offshore. We've had a comfortable ride. I think everybody is really starting to acclimate to this motion. Uh, Katie and I are sleeping really well. I think Andrew is sleeping really well. The watch schedule is working. Um, three hours on and then six hours off because of three people as crew is just incredible. Really, really nice watch schedule. Katie is making some tea for me and her. She was just on watch and I relieved her. So that's it. see the sun trying to pop out there a little bit. Now, since it's so calm, I'm just checking everything we have lashed down and checking the furling drum and all the parts. It looks pretty good.
It's the it thing, Katie. The it thing. What is that? The sky. <laughs> yeah. Okay, team. What do we come up with? Oh man, so over popcorn. We got popcorn. So we've got a lot of miles behind us, but a lot more to go. <laughs> so uh, we had to figure figure out where we're gonna stop, plus the addition of some diesel somewhere in short order because we've had to do a lot more motoring. Uh, so we're going to stop at Goose Bay tomorrow, get in tomorrow afternoon, and, um, or late morning. Okay. And then um, get a hot shower, hot meal, and then make a quick overnight sail to Eureka. Spend a few days in Eureka waiting for the winds to detach from the coast, and then off to San Francisco Friday. I don't have anything else to add to that. <laughs> Other than the timeline does depend on the weather. Yes, always. In any, in, especially around Cape Mendocino, that exit will be crucial from Eureka. Finally got over my seat sickness and uh, now this is this is lovely now. This is great. I almost don't want to come back to land and, and threaten getting seasick again. Oh yeah. But this is awesome now. Now you have the your catch fell off though. That was what really Oh caused yeah. It. I still got my catch now. Yeah. The first one fell off. And so did all my lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and everything I ate there for a couple days before that. Oh god. And yeah. Yep. That's right. We all look like we need a shower, <laughs> or at least I do. I've been washing my face, brushing my teeth. We both did a nude shower yesterday. We both wiped off. I've been doing all the hygiene stuff every day, so mm -hmm. changing my underwear. Wait. Still smell good. Really? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Parker, I don't know about you. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's our third night at sea. Tomorrow morning, we're going to get into Coos Bay which is just above Cape Blanco. And you need to go get And some I need rest. to go get some rest because I have the 9 p.m. to midnight shift and then the 6 p.m. 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. shift. Yeah. And, so that's uh, also a nice chunk of time you can sleep after that. Mm -hmm. You need to go rest for the so, next hour and a half. Yep, she's telling me to go rest. The wind has all but died and so we're motoring. We have the mainsail up for balance as you can see. So, that's all she wrote. Oh, you did? Yeah. Thanks. I got paid on Friday, but we were kind of out here. Yeah. And it's Friday, and it's cold because it's wet. I don't have my sweatshirt on. So, was this watch better than your other one? Yeah, there was only one fishing boat. And it was when it started to get light out, but it was still dark out. Uh -huh. um, but it was much better, and it helped that it got light. I like seeing it get light outside, even though the fog is so thick right now. Yeah. And it's really wet out here. But it got light, and um, haven't seen too many crab pots, which was my big concern coming into Pulse of Alien. We, I dodged like three of them in a row. They were like worked next to each other. Did you see the blinking lights though? What? Did you see Those them? ones didn't have blinking lights. They were just black buoys. Um, lots of these little birds sitting in the water, it's kind of cute. So, that's about it. Um, should arrive with a nice, not too strong of a print mm -hmm. the tide. And then, um, oh well, you made a bunch of really good. Yeah, you did.
It is an incredibly foggy but beautiful morning. There's just these little teeny tiny Pacific Ocean lumps that we're just riding up and down. They're, they're like a quarter mile apart. And we've slowed the engine down to slow the boat speed down. We're only doing 3.6 knots. It is an ebbing tide at about two and a half knots coming out of the Coos Bay Inlet. And, um, and it's gonna be slack tide around 9.30. So we're timing to get there right around nine o'clock because then it'll take about a half an hour for us to get in and then to our marina. Um, so then it'll be continuing to like calm down and slacken as we uh, approach our marina through the channel. It's hard to believe that this is the Pacific Ocean. I don't think any of us were expecting to have hardly any wind. Um, I think we were all prepared for some like roaring downwind sailing. But, uh, and we have had a lot of really great broad reaching and we um, sailed wing on wing for a while yesterday. Um, we threatened to get the spinnaker out a couple times, but it was, uh, I just think we all wanted to just keep it a little conservative. We just, I guess, didn't estimate as accurately as we should have the amount of time that it would take to cover that amount of mileage. Um, it's our first time ever trying to estimate that. Never done a passage this long. And so because we've had the motor so much and we've used probably about a half a tank of diesel already and there's still about 400 miles to San Francisco from here so and being 80 80 miles offshore that became something that really needed to be considered so that was what fueled our decision to come back towards land um, thankfully there wasn't any localized weather in the radar we've been downloading weather files and and talking with our weather router Chris Parker this water here can really get nasty from everything I've read and heard. I think it was an absolutely beautiful few days and we've definitely figured out that we are capable of offshore sailing, which is pretty cool. So it's not raining, but the fog is covering the, the, the camera. So it's probably a little, there we go. So, all right. I'm going to just keep watching out for crab pots because we are in crab pot territory now and um, enjoying this just absolutely serene ocean that we are ghosting through right now. Well, Andrew just came up on deck. Yeah. It is. You wake me up, Parker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I needed some help. We are, uh, we are now a two-man crew <laughs> for getting into Coos Bay Inlet with all this traffic around and it's very foggy, so you can't see anyone even if they're a quarter mile from you. So. Lots of horns. That's good. Lots of what? Lots of horns. Oh yeah, lots of horns. This is the first time in my life I've ever heard a fog horn used for what it was meant to be used for. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-truck horns and stuff like that don't count. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, if we saw one, I would totally do that. I don't know if you can hear that over the engine, but that was a foghorn from a ship that's a beam of us. All right, we're just about to uh, enter the Coos Bay Bar. We've got a first current buoy right off the bow, and uh, conditions are good, so I think we'll be all right. We've got a little bit of a uh, ebb current, one and a half knots, but no wind, so really happy about that. Right. New place, we're not gonna see much anyway with this fog, but exciting. <laughs> that's the first marker of the channel into Coos Bay. That's a buoy that actually transmits its location, its AIS location, and it's called a safe water buoy. That was so cool.
Andrew called it, land ho. You can see it through the fog over there. Day four at sea. And now land. Yeah. That's awesome. And that also means hot showers and hot meals. Yeah, it does. What does it mean? Hot showers and hot meals. Hot showers and hot meals and sleep forever. And walking around. Walking around. Walking around. Oh, there's more land over there. So that's a bar report. Uh, the Coast Guard is really good about giving any requesting vessels a, a report of the conditions of these bars that people cross. What a cool feeling it is to see a coastline after a few days of not seeing anything but empty horizon. Both of them are just so beautiful in each way, in, in their own way. <laughs> Cannot speak, <laughs> too tired. <laughs> sitting at the nav station. The boat is at the dock and it is the weirdest thing that we aren't moving around right now. It is stable. Pretty cool feeling. <laughs> 